These elections that are taking place uh, this time for the assembly in Tamil Nadu is part of the elections for the assemblies in other states like Kerala, West Bengal, Assam and in Puducherry. Now these are very important elections in the current Indian context because the country is passing through one of the worst stages in terms of our parliamentary democracy and our constitutional order. The AIDMK government in Tamil Nadu is completely in alignment and supportive of the BJP government in the centre and of Prime Minister Modi and his policies that are ruining the livelihood of our people, destroying the constitution of India and mercilessly attacking the democratic rights and civil liberties of the people while spreading communal polarization and poison and hatred in our society, dividing our people. In the interests of both Tamil Nadu and the interests of India, this cannot be allowed to continue. That is why a decisive defeat for the BJP and its ally AIDMK in Tamil Nadu is absolutely essential for safeguarding India today, for safeguarding Tamil Nadu today, and for the people of Tamil Nadu to contribute to saving India today so that we can change and create a better India tomorrow. That is a big challenge before all of you and a big responsibility. And I am sure you will rise to the occasion in delivering this res responsibility in a very, very mature and in a responsible manner. There is no section of the working people in our country which are not suffering today. Even before the COVID pandemic came, the Indian economy was moving towards a recession. Our unemployment was growing, prices were, were galloping, and the situation of the people and the misery of hunger, malnutrition was increased. When the COVID came and when the national lockdown came, the situation worsened. And the situation worsened for the working people. But for the rich people in our country and those who are the friends of Mr. Prime Minister Modi, this situation and this one year has been an year of greater riches and greater wealth. And what is the degree of this difference? During the last one year, nearly 15 crores of Indian people have lost their jobs. The child malnutrition in our country is the worst in the world. The women status of their health, particularly a pregnant, a pregnant woman who created the future of India, who are delivering the future of India, that has got the worst record anywhere amongst all the countries in the world. When people's miseries are going, when prices are galloping like what we have seen of petrol and your cooking gas and other petroleum products, Every day, the government is making money by imposing burdens on all of us. In that situation, we have the number of billionaires in our country have grown the fastest rate in the world. The fastest rate of poverty and hunger, the fastest rate of billionaires that are growing, that is in India. There is one Billionaire, the richest person in India. He makes 90 crores of rupees in one hour. 90 crores of rupees in one hour. There are 40 crores of people who are surviving in less than 3,000 rupees per month per family in our country in the same period of the one year. That is the stark difference. Modi's policies are only enriching the rich impoverizing the poor. This is not a government for the people of India. This is a government for the rich of India. And this sort of a government, supported by your AIDMK here, cannot be allowed to come back to form the government again, either in Tamil Nadu or in India. It is your responsibility, and this is a historic responsibility for the people of Tamil Nadu to show the way and direction for people of India in how we can restore our dignity of life and we can restore our survival in a proper manner. And that is the essence of these elections before all of you.
no right to strike now when forthcoming and that very very high restrictions the minimum wages etc all that will be abolished security of employment will be taken away but anyway for prime minister modi the bjp and your aibm ke self reliance means it is self and reliance self reliance is for first self and then for reliance and so that is their concept of self reliance and that is what we must realize that india is out to be looted it was looted earlier by various people including the british now indians are looting india and which is in the guise of this ruling bjp party at the same and look at the other area in the name when people are rising in protest the effort is to divide them on the basis of religious polarization on the basis of communal polarization spreading communal hatred and this hatred is leading to murders this is leading to killings and particularly the targets are our dalits and are particularly dalit women young dalit women we've seen the gruesome rape in hathras in up yesterday the father of the girl the victim he was shot dead by the people who did that gang rape in the fields of uttar pradesh and the bjp government in the state is doing nothing about it like this our our sisters our daughters they are not safe today under under this government under this bjp dispensation dalits women our tribals our adivasis all their rights are being attacked and trampled upon and this hatred and violence it is actually dehumanizing a human being in our country today it is that sort of of, of a situation that this government has brought about and anybody who rises in protest against that they are being arrested under uapa under sedition and they are being kept in jail without any charges being framed for years on such is the attack on the democratic rights and civil liberties of our people that is why the international freedom index yesterday has downgraded india into saying that we are no longer a free country india is no longer a free country it is an authoritarian country where people's rights are being abused and and fully completely denied international agencies are saying this. international global hunger index has downgraded us and put us into the those for the lowest five countries in the world where people suffer from hunger that is the state of affairs that is being brought about in our country by this bjp government at the center and our your aidm ke government here is completely supportive of all these things that have happened when farmers from tamil nadu they came to delhi when an intense drought took place with just one cloth around their waist they came to delhi with white white mice what do you call white uh, rats saying that this is all we can eat there is no food i was there in parliament i took them to meet the prime minister and tell them that at least give them some relief no for these farmers no relief is given no loan waiver is given but to mr modi's friends and the rich people nearly 8 lakh crores of rupees of loans they took from our banks your money my money lying in the banks 8 lakh crores of rupees has been waived nearly 8 lakh crores of rupees has been written off for the rich people but for our annadatas who are eating white rats for them no relief this is the inhuman nature of this government and your aidmk what can i say to them in my telugu culture there is a practice which we call in telugu vidhi bhagavatam means there will be one person the sutradhar who will come and tell the story and every time he finishes one part of the story there are two people from behind 
फूल से तंदा न तरना फूल दैट इज गोज ऑन से ही तंदा न तरना वॉट एवर द सूत्र सो वॉट एवर मोदी से योर योर ब्रदर्स our uh, tribal brothers and sisters and protect ourselves and our children from this sort of cruel and brutal attacks in every sphere of our existence that is why today in the name of their dominance in the parliament with 37% of the vote that that was polled in the last parliament election they have a two third majority in the lok sabha and because of that they are undermining the lok sabha itself they are undermining the parliamentary democracy itself and no no law is being properly discussed in the parliament and that we have seen earlier with the citizenship amendment act we have seen earlier with the abolition of article 370 for jnk and now we have seen with the farm bills and they are bulldozing their way through the parliament destroying parliamentary democracy and in the process what are they doing they are creating wanting to create one country one language one culture which is the philosophy of the rss the new education policy without being properly discussed and adopted by the parliament is now being implemented and part of the implementation is a language policy and the language policy where the imposition of hindi as the national language and the only language all over the country irrespective of all the feelings or the sentiments of people of different states different cultures different backgrounds different linguistic backgrounds that uniformity is sort to be divided india is a plural society ours is a federal federal democracy federal polity the rights of the states are being trampled upon and a unitary state structure control from the center is being imposed the people of tamil nadu have a very big legacy of fighting for the rights of the state and the autonomy of the state <laughs> even during the emergency the people of tamil nadu rose up in defense of the rights of the elected state governments of the states and defied indira gandhi in her emergency you have this legacy today what are they doing Na- name of imposing one culture one country one language one culture they are imposing languages and cultures practices that are different and distinct from each part of our country the culture in assam the culture in kerala the culture in tamil nadu culture in myandra culture of the marathas culture of the ma ba ba madhya pradesh etc the, the those part, parts of india or avadh culture in lucknow and up none of these can be can be uniform uniformly implemented we live on the basis of our diversity which is our richness they want to destroy this diversity impose their uniformity and that is something that unfortunately your state government in tamil nadu is actually allowing it to happen and that is why we cannot and we shall not no linguistic nationality in our country will allow the destruction of their specific identity and what they cherish and value the most and that is why today they say what is there in a language sanskrit is the mother of all languages indian languages they forget what is elementary in our in in our psychological makeup of our people remember what is the importance of the mother tongue please recollect from history you have the krishna devaraya krishna devaraya 
I'm sure all of you are aware of uh, the kingdom of Hampi, Vijayanagara, the most prosperous of the kingdoms. He had his Ashtadig Kavis, the eight of the Isaidia ones, and which was international repute, nobody could challenge them. Suddenly one scholar comes from the Middle East. He speaks 16 languages. And he comes and challenges Krishna Devaraya. Is there any one person in your whole empire who can speak to me in all the 16 languages and identify what is my mother tongue? So all the big Pandit Kavis and etc. everybody talks to him. Dikanna, Pedanna, all those famous uh, poets, literature, everybody talks to him but they can't identify his mother tongue. As always, when such problems come, there is one character of the eight Ashtadik Kavis, that is your Tanali Ramakrishna. So Krishna Devaraya calls Tanali Ramakrishna and says, tell me, this is the prestige of my empire, how do you save my empire? What is the mother tongue of this gentleman who has come from abroad? So Tanali Ramakrishna says, sir, give me one night's time, one night. So nobody knows why, what do we do in that night? So they said, okay, one night time. That uh, foreigner also agreed. So in the night when that foreigner was sleeping, Tenali Rama goes with a bucket of cold water and pours over that foreigner in his sleep. And that foreigner starts saying, Ayo Ammo and gets up. The language in which he says, Ayo Ammo, next morning he says, that is his mother tongue. Because when you instinctively, your only mother tongue comes out. And that is the value of the mother tongue that Modi doesn't understand. We have to make him understand this is the mother tongue is the language which is the instinctive expression of every human being. If you seek to destroy that or impose your mother tongue on my mother tongue, that is not going to be accepted, neither will it work. And on that count alone, they shall have to be defeated in these coming elections. That is why we from the Marxist party, we have said under the DMK's leadership, the unity of all the secular forces who are defenders of the Indian constitution, they should all come together and ensure that this BJP, AM, DMK combined is defeated in these coming assembly elections. As the largest party, the DMK, we are sure that they will display the maturity, they will display the responsibility of the leadership of this front and accommodate all the other constituent parties in a manner in which this unity of the secular democratic forces will become stronger. And I'm sure the process will, will consolidate in the days to come because I remember Kalenga used to always teach us and I was very fortunate that I could spend or he would spend, I mean give me a lot of his advice in the earlier days and he'd always keep saying this only the unity of well-minded people who want to safeguard India that can save our country and that advice of his is absolutely correct in today, more correct in today's situation and context. That is why this unity is required for alternative policies. There is no shortage of funds in our country, resources. Instead of this loot that this Modi government is doing, instead of that loot, if these resources are used to build our infrastructure through public investments, crores and crores of new jobs will be generated to build that infrastructure. And when our youth start getting their salaries out of these new jobs, when they start spending, the demand in the economy will grow. Our closed MSMEs, your Goyambatur, famous for its MSMEs, which all of them are closed today. Goyambatur was what is called the pump capital of India. Today all these factories are closed. Crores of people have become unemployed. All these MSMEs can be revived when this demand revives, when people have money to buy. That can be created through infrastructural development, through public investments. 
All these clothes, the MSMEs can restart their activity and revive the economy and the prosperity of areas like in Coimbatore. So this alternative is there, but you require the political courage and determination to implement this alternative. And that means this BJP, AIDMK alliance must be defeated. This secular democratic alternative must come into office to implement these alternative policies so that we can regain the prosperity of the people of Tamil Nadu. And that is the biggest objective that we must try to achieve in these elections. That is why I am confident that all of you in these coming elections will, in the interests of Tamil Nadu, in our own interests, defeat the BJP in the ADMK and elect a secular, democratic, pro-people's policies oriented alternative and restore the prosperity for the people of Tamil Nadu. So I am sure after the elections with a new government in Tamil Nadu headed by the secular democratic forces, when you have discharged your responsibility, I will come back to all of you to join your celebrations and, and, and enjoy the fact that there is the state of Tamil Nadu that is showing the way to the rest of India, that we will have to safeguard our country, safeguard our country today to change India for the better tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much.